<laughs> okay, I am here with Takashi Tanamori. Yes? Yes. Okay, Takashi, how do you ignite your life, first of all? You have an amazing story, but we're going to get to that in a minute. How do you ignite your life? It's the best way, as my father taught me, Takashi, know who you are. No matter whatever situation you make through, but secondly, is that you always, always find a way to serve, live for the others, then we are all benefit. And this is the simplest way to make the world safer, peaceful place. Takashi learns to live for the benefit of others. And you had told me something about the word samurai that your father had told you a samurai. What did he say? Samurai, and often they not, or perhaps the majority of Western concept, a perception of samurai is a warrior or a woman. But that's totally, totally different. Western people do not understand the true meaning of samurai. Samurai means servant, to serve, to defend the truth, to promote the peace, and especially defending the treasure, earthen treasure. It means to me that we need to take care of the earth. And that's the greatest treasure that God has given to us, this earth, what we call a home. So Samla is not the warrior, but to serve that's others. And your that's beautiful. I, I love that uh, true definition of the word. So what did your father say about a samurai? What was his phrase? Something about a samurai always lives? Yes. Oh, samurai say, and true samurai is always, always find a way to live. That's no matter whatever circumstances, how bad you might think, true samurai always find a way to live for the benefit of others. However, when you feel the samurai field, it will benefit a greater society, or society will have the greater benefit by his death than the living. It was that point Samurai truly contemplate whether or not to live or die. Wonderful. So that's how you ignite your life, is by giving to others? Yes, basically to give myself to others for the benefit. And this way, you know, that is it. We all benefit. But also the desire to live for the, shall I say, for the benefit of others, but no matter whatever it is, true to my own heart, who I am. I think that is the greatest motivating power, that I know who I am and honored my heart was truth, regardless of consequences or outcomes. And so tell me your story about Hiroshima. You were a young boy when the bomb was dropped. So can you recount that story for me, for us? Yes, quickly, there's so much that I could tell you. I could tell the next 48 hours. <laughs> but so just on the morning, August 6, 1945, but prior to that, night before the bomb in Hiroshima, on August 5th, we had a six air raids, somewhere starting around nine o'clock and ended 20 minutes after two, which is August 6th. But in doing this uh, uh, air raid, we run into the bomb shelter and there I had a dream or vision in which white crane, whom I call Senbazuru, mighty as a thousand cranes, came to me and said, Takashi, I am going to show you 
your life for the next 40 years. Yes, suffering, devastation, anger, you name it. But there's a joy, the transformation, and the dream, and the laughter. But next 40 years of your life. So he asked me, hop on his, his back. So there in my dream, riding on the back of a white crane, he has shown me vision for 40 years. Then at the end of vision, there was a flash in the sky and the silence, deafening silence. Then the explosion took place, and I saw the fireball, just like the mushroom cloud. And the crane was sucked into the fire. And I tried to pull him out to save him, but I was only eight years old boy. I couldn't pull him out from the fire and he consumed by the fire. So I cried, I cried, I said, sorry, Sempadoro, I can't help you, I cannot save you, I cried. But at the end of my crying, I looked up the sky. Then I saw the, all the embers from fires turning into monarch butterfly. Can you imagine that? In Japan, there's no such creature as monarch butterflies, which you find only in North continent America. But there I saw all the embers turn into monarch butterfly, and in the midst of that, I saw the white butterfly approaching me and said, Takashi, it's me, it's me. And I remember the voice of Sembazuru. Now Sembazuru emerged into a white butterfly. And so I stand up my feet, I stretch out my hand, and white butterfly land my palm. And we converse a little while. Then he said, Takashi, I got to go, I got to go, I got to take all my friends and back to where we need to go. Then he said, Takashi, remember the words of your father to live for the benefit of others. Remember, know who you are. Remember, you are the true son of a samurai. Thus, it took off with all monarch butterfly. Then, several hours later, on 8.15, on August 6, 1945, I saw the flash in the sky, deafening sound, exploder, mm. and a fireball, just like I saw in the dream. It was few hours ago. Mm. And that's all I remember for some time later. When I recognized, when my consciousness regained, I was under the debris of the school building, where like a matchbox and a frame. You could smell the, the burning and there's no oxygen. I was just scratching my chest and the throat. Later, I found out my fingernails just in the entire chest cavity. In a pitch darkness, I heard the voice of his classmates calling my name. Takachan, save me, come and save me. But I said, Taro, Kasuko, I can't, I cannot move. While I'm screaming back to them that I'm sorry I can't help them. Mm. Then one by one, that flame engulfed them. Mm. I could feel the heat coming toward me and in the pitch darkness, I saw the flame like 
they've been told to me like a serpent's tongue. So at that point I scream out of my bottom of my heart and help, Daddy, come help, save me. It was that moment. Luckily, soldiers on that campus, one of them came and dug me out, clutched me in his arm, and then we, he weaved through in and out in the burning city. And we fled to the river, Temmagawa River, behind the school, where they had a little sandy beach in the early morning. And on the way to the beach, did you know, Sara Sensei? Mm. I saw that man, I think he was a man almost unrecognizable because he was a bird, mm. blackened. But he said to soldiers who's crunching me in his arm, he said, please give me the water, water. Mizu, Mizu, kudasai. Mm. And the soldier just shook his head. Then he just clung to him and said, please put me out of misery. Mm. Then we just left the sea. Then, perhaps in the next 10 minutes or so, I saw that I heard a woman calling her children's name one by one. As she passed in front of us, was maybe three feet in front of us. I saw the baby on her back, but it was a headless. Mm -hmm. I don't think she knew the baby's head was blown off, but she was frantically calling the children's name. Then uh, finally we reached the river. Multitude, thousands of people just pushing, shoving to just claim the little space on the sandy beach, on the other mm -hmm. side of the river bank, or the inferno. Mm -hmm. Oh, I tell you, by the time I saw uh, we got the bottom of the sandy beach, there are little waters in the river, and many people just uh, put a face down and drink in the waters and no one was able to get up. Mm -hmm. And then we cried, the people cried, the water, water, water. Perhaps the Creator heard our cry. Did you know, Sarasense, on the southwest side of the sky, it turned the black. Then the prison, the rain came down, the black rain. I may be exaggerating the size of the marble. And it came down like a bucket full. Mm. And the river started to rise so fast. By that time, the tide from the oceans coming in. And the many people sweat. The luckily soldiers quickly put us up the, the top of the river bank embankment. And the many people just swept and drift against the pylon of the bridge. In the midst of that the chaos, I heard my name called Takashi, Takashi. Oh, it was so beautiful. Mm. That was my daddy's calling my name. Mm. I don't know how he found me, but at the, the moment he stood before the soldiers who was clutching me in his arm and thanked him. 
I just know he was the savior of mm. my father's number one son. As mm. he clutched me. Oh, I tell you, I never felt the strength of my daddy's arm. I knew I am safe mm. that very moment. So soldiers quickly salute my daddy said, I have a duty to perform. I must return to my base and wish my father a long journey. And my father stood there, stood there, throngs of people pushing, shoving. But my father stood firmly on at that point, looking the direction the soldier disappeared bowing, bowing. Then, I do not know that was the same day or next day, as I said, more likely late that afternoon, I think, my father found my grandparents on his side. My sister, Masio, she was 16 years old, my younger brother was four years old, so we are united. But oh, there's no place to sit down that morning because the fires in front to the right, the left, the front, the back. Only space was a little embankment. 20 feet wide. People pushing, shoving, and screaming, the parents because their children was <laughs> claimed by the flame. Mm. Then, more likely next day or two, again, I have no recollection of that time. But the many people have been swept, many dead bodies, live one. <laughs> All the debris just pushed against part of the bridge already burned down. That became the bridge. So many people are stumbling, trying to cross over at the side of a river. Many didn't make it, fell down. No one had the energy to pick them up. And then by the time we crossed, I still remember my father said, stepping over the people, stepping on and over the people as we crossed the human bridge. He said, come in the side, come in the side. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And as we reached the other side of the temple gun, it was the first time my daddy put me down the ground. All this time, my father kept his own. And my baby, my younger brother said to my older sister, I still record what he said. It's not fear, my daddy is killing my big brother and I have to walk, he said. It's not fair. But I injured my head, the shoulder, and my arm, the leg. I could be able to walk. That's why I was being carried. But anyway, Sara Sensei, after we reached the other side, my father put me in the ground. And there, most memorable moment I witnessed between them, my grandfather and my father, who is a true samurai. What my father taught me was taught by his father, my grandpa. There in that chaotic moment, no one, thousands of people going the east and the south and north and just wondering because no place to go. 
But there my father and my grandpa facing each other, put our arms on, on their shoulders. And then my grandpa said to my daddy, as he bowed his head, said, smug, smug. In the Japanese, say, I'm sorry. That word smug embraced that everything it's from his own soul my grandpa said thank you to my daddy that all the things he has done to brought us to the other side of the river <sighs> mm. that was the one segment that i could share with you thank you Thank you. That was very difficult. I know. <sighs> you know, one uh, just a uh, humor uh, uh, I want to share with you. From that moment, west side of, or northwest side of, of Riverbank, Tenmagawa, from there we walk about 10 miles to the train station. And from there, we are hoping to ride the train to Kotachi village, about 60 miles from the city, where my mother's uh, maternal parents live. So here we are, walking through just this much. No one knew where we were going. I mean, no one, no one. And we are all black. By that time, my left arm burned, the pus starting, and just, oh, I, I can still smell that pus. Mm. And while we are marching toward the train station, it was a beautiful sunny day, it was a sunny morning or day as we were traveling. Then all of a sudden, the sun was darkened. And I looked at the sky, but I didn't see the cloud. But did you know, Sara Sensei? I don't know that thousands and thousands of people died instantly in, on August 6th. But there were thousands, thousands of black flies just came down and covered in the, I mean, the black in the sun. Then feasting, landing up, burned, wound. They are feasting all the uh, pus and the blood as we are marching. And I said to myself, wow, what a strange scene. We as human people die, the babies are consumed by fire. But where they come from, they black flies had the power to cover the sun, the feast in our wood. And that was, to me, st I still can't figure out where they come from, those black flies. That's amazing. What an experience. Yeah, it was. Wow. Thank you for reliving that, basically. <sighs> Thank you for asking. But you know, those are incidents, like my father's grandpa, and the black flies, mm -hmm. and the soldiers, or the men begging soldiers to put him out of misery. The mother passing by, I saw that her headless child. Mm -hmm. I don't think those are things have been mentioned. Maybe has drawn the picture. I may have seen the picture of you all. To me, I saw my father, my grandpa, that moment I witnessed in front of the bombing of Hiroshima on August 6th, going through the dark, dark, darkest hours crossing the 
bridge made by human body, living and dead. Mm. Crossing over to hearing my father's heartbeat. Come in the side, come in the side. Then to witness two men. Oh, what a rich enrichment in my life. But without the Hiroshima path, I can ever, ever witness. Mm. So in that sense, I'm ever grateful. However painful, devastating experience I experienced because of Hiroshima bombing. But again, I repeat, without that, I could never, never saw the truth of my daddy, my grandpa, who is a true samurai. Mm. That is the truth. He, he lived exactly what he taught you. Yeah, I tell you, I'm so delighted that he was my daddy. Mm. Sadao Tanemori. He is my daddy. Mm. If you have any question, anything, I'd be more than happy to answer you. Thank you. I, I now want to ask you okay. about your artwork because what you've done since that happened, since that horrible experience happened when you were eight years old, is you've taken the horror of that experience and turned it around into forgiveness and healing. Um, so tell me about that journey. Yes, when I was 16 years old, I wasn't able to withstand the pressures, the conformity to the Japanese traditional cultures because to survive in the Japanese culture, you have to bow down, I mean, already bow down against your own wish and will. Being a Takashi Tanori, I must honor my heart. So there was such a conflict. And again, I said, when I was 16 years old, I wasn't able to withstand, so I attempted suicide and I failed. And then, moment I knew it, my father rejected me. Takashi, the true son of a samurai, fails to take life. Oh, what a shame the disgrace I brought to Tanemori family, except especially to my daddy. So, what do you do? What do you have to do? As number one son of a samurai, my duty to avenge my father's death. So, 16 years old, I said, Daddy, it doesn't matter. It might take 100 years, 200 years. I am going to America, the land of America, which I have no idea where it is. Where it is. But I'm going to get there to take revenge for your death and restore the Tanemori name to the form of glory. So somehow, somewhere, I found a way. As I was told by the Japanese government, Hiroshima government officer, Mr. Tanemori, there's a way to get to America. America government opened its arm to the survivor of Hiroshima, Nagasaki. It's merciful hand to welcome survivors with an open arm because America is a Christian nation. They will welcome you with an open arm, with love, and all that promise. So, July, I think, or June 24th, June 24th, 1956, I came to America. Place that I was told later, it is the place where you find 
fulfillment of a dream. You could dream anything you want and you could find it. Did you know when I was, I came to America, I was transported to the migrant labor camp, Delano, California, Central Valley of California, working a migrant labor camp, picking the Thompson grapes in the heat of 117 degrees in the shade. That's the dirty picking the fruit to feed Americans to whom I consider my archbow enemies. Oh, Sarah Sensei, I never got so angry at myself. Why in the world I bring myself to the depths of the hell? To humble myself to pick in the fruit. But I found the consolation because I care America no matter what. I am avenged my father's death by taking the revenge on the Americans. Then, why in the migrant camp? I heard so much. So often say, you plunkety plunkety Jap, sneak attack Pearl Harbor. And I was only four years old then. Was I guilty of the Pearl Harbor? Mm -hmm. But they accused of me. They call me the criminal and this and that. You they name and they name. And oh. So it was that moment I said, how in the world the Japanese soldier who's Many of the soldiers, foods and veins run, running by the samurai blood. Samurai, true samurai, never fight if there is a fight secretly. They always declare. So I said, how in the world the Americans accuse me, the secret, sneak attack in Pearl Harbor? Did you know that was the reason I want to find out and try to blast the Americans thinking that sneak attack Pearl Harbor as a true Japanese way of fighting. So from that moment, it takes another 20 years struggling. So one day I was speaking to the University, university students at the Colorado University, Colorado Spring. And those students say, Mr. Tanemori, your story, what you have gone through from the, all the wartime and the post water and the finding of peace by forgiveness. Students say, Mr. Tanmori, we have a request. I say, okay, tell me. Whatever I can, I'll be glad to you know, do it. So they say, Sarah Sensei, this is how they say, Mr. Tanmori, your story, could you, would you be able, willing to translate it or create pictorial? format, create pictures, each section, each moment, whatever you want, into the full and artwork. Why are you showing a piece of artwork that you could speak to high school kids? I think that's the most powerful way to present the truth of the, what you have gone through, what the war has the impact on an individual and as a nation of people. 
did you know to translate into pictorial presentation? I thought that was a brilliant idea. We often say, seeing, believing. So I said, all right, did you know it took nine years of research, historical background, why the Pearl Harbor? So I had to cover the almost 600 prior to 19, December 1, December 7, uh, December 7, 1941. I mean, a four to 600 years prior to the Japanese American history to validate, to prove what I believe that soldier, Japan never attacked the Pearl Harbor sneakily. It was a known Pearl Harbor incident. So nine years of research. Then guess what? How many more years? Next, another total six years to complete this art piece. Right now, 81 pieces here hanging. But I, I had about 120 in my mind. But so 40 some art pieces are, are never existed, or some of them in you know, my boxes. But the many pieces, what, what, what we have here, 81 pieces, is chronologically how the conflict between the US and Japan in the light of the political, military, quagmires in the Far East. European nations, South America, until the Commodore period, using a warship. Yes, talk about sneak attack on Japan. Mm -hmm. Commodore Perry's expedition, we had no knowledge. Shogun Tokugawa had no knowledge when he saw the, the long nozzle of the Warship pointing the castle. This is what the Shogun Tokugawa said For my people's sake, I have to bow down. For my sake of my people, I will submit, subjugate myself to the long nozzle of the Mississippi. Kentucky, the warship. So you know the story, all the rest of the history. Yes, Shogun lost. And uh, Japan leaped from the feudalism into modern day Japan, which was nurtured. While well, American government became a surrogate mother to create new nation of Japan, which we call a Meiji indictment. Yes, Meiji Tenno Emperor sacrificed the truth with the samurai loyalty, honor, duty, all that sacrifice for sake of modernization of Japan, subjugating to American imperialism. But I'm so glad it took how many years? Nine years of research, six years of making the art for here I am. I am confident this artwork, US Japan, a bridge between nations, it presents human conflict how it manifests, but how can bring the solution to human conflict by learning to forgive. Forgiveness is the highest or greatest or perhaps the only way to manifest true love. That I experienced my heart on August 5th, 19th. 85, as I like crossing the Bay Bridge, on that morning, 
the dream I had on the August 5th, 1945, night before the bombing of Hiroshima. Remember that Semba Zero, White Crane said, this is your life for the next 40 years, suffering victory. Yes, 40 years, exactly the date, 40 years later, on that Bay, Bay Bridge, spanning from San Francisco to Oakland, the dream returned. And I remember the word of a father, Takashi, learn to live for the benefits of others. True samurai is always find a way to live. For what? For defending the treasures, earthen treasure. Defending the truth. And there, the moment, why sudden behind the parked car, crying, and wondering which way should I go, revenge or what? That very moment, did you know Sada Sensei? Ah, oh, I wish you could paint. The white butterfly, the one I saw, like one I saw in a dream, one in that dream, white crane emerges to white butterfly. Just like that white butterfly flew into my car through the open window, landing the dashboard and flattening the wings. Did you did you know I heard the flattening the thousands and thousands of monarch butterfly? And then disappeared. I heard the sound. Then again, I heard the voice as a white butterfly disappeared in the yonder. Takashi, remember the words of your father. Takashi, remember the words of your father. And that's disappeared. That very moment, I heard the voice of my. My baby, my baby, princess, she was 11 years old. Her voice appeared that moment. Said, Daddy, Daddy, I know you have been trying to get even with Americans, but just like they missed you, some of you are not gonna get all of them. They're gonna come after you to get even with you. But not you, Daddy, but you children, us, us. They're going to come after us, We're trying to get even with them. Is that how you, my grandpa, it's my father, is that how grand, my grandpa going to be happy about that? <sighs> Sarah Sensei, it was the first time I took my breath. I held my breath, thinking of what she said. Is that how my father be happy? Allow my children to be suffer because I take the revenge on the Americans? They are innocent children, my children, but also innocent American children gonna die. I said, no, I could do that. I could not allow that. That's not what my daddy taught me. So that was the moment my girl, princess, said, Daddy, Daddy, is there any other way? Is there any other way? Then I finally hear the last time the crane, the butterfly disappeared. He said, Takashi, remember the words of your father. I think that acknowledgement, 
realization that revenge gets revenge, anger gets anger, there's no end to the revenge. Then I went to a meeting in San Francisco. And there I was one of the guest speakers. Anti-war, anti-American rally. And the people in the audience are eagerly waiting for my just hot, red hot message. And I could almost sense it. Audience say, yay, Takashi, get him. Get the American, blankly, blankly Americans. I picked up the energy. And there I was. I briskly walked up to the podium. Five pages note spread on the podium. And I was ready to deliver the message of the revenge. This is the day I may honor my own heart, delivering a message of revenge on Americans. But did you know, Sara Sensei? Yes, I want that. I desire it. For this reason, I survived all these years. 40 long years, I survived just this very moment. This is the day. <laughs> but I was able to deliver the message. And somehow, by accident, those five pages, the message fell on the floor. I didn't have the gut enough to bend over to pick them up. But, that point, once again, voice of my daughter, Daddy, is there any other way? Daddy! That's uh, my message was, instead of revenge, the message was forgiveness. I asked the audience, please forgive me the rape of Nanking as a symbolizer. The Japanese military powers oppressing the Chinese. Of course, that include the Berbers and Indonesia, you name it. Then I ask forgiveness for the Korean comfort. Then I ask the Batam March of the Philippines. And I asked Americans if we were in the audience, please forgive me for the Pearl Harbor. <laughs> then guess what I did? I just took a deep breath and oh, I just stretched my shoulders. I raised my shoulders, stretched deep breath, then I sweep the audience with my eyes. And I said, I will forgive you, Hiroshima. Wow, I didn't know how powerful that phrase, I will forgive you, the Hiroshima. The moment I uttered those sounds, Somehow, somewhere, I felt a heavy load on my back, just somebody took up. Now I almost fell backward because so light. Now I never felt my heart just like a candy, cotton candy, so light. Then I went outside sometime later. I never saw it. The sun, American sun in the blue sky, humongous. I never seen so big and so bright. But 
I want you to know one more thing. How important the forgiveness. But then that was August 1st, 1985, 40 years, exactly 40 years after the vision. Then the next 10 days, I was most miserable, most, I felt I was a deep criminal. I betrayed my fathers, my ancestor, my grandpa, the you name. I betrayed my fathers because instead of avenging his death, I forgave the enemies. Oh, I, I couldn't almost, I couldn't make it. So these 10 days, and I, then I contemplated taking my life. Then I knew that he's gonna reject me. I couldn't do that either. But at the midnight of August 15, 1985, did you know my father first time ever appeared to me? Before that, his, his spirit appeared many times. But this night, August 15, 1985, he appeared to me not only in the spirit, but he appeared to me wearing the, the regal kimono with in, uh, the Tanamori family crest. Then he had the two swords in the side. And he looked up into my eyes. And then immediately I said, Daddy, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Before I finish my sentence, my father put his hand on my shoulder, looking square into my eyes. Did you know what Sara Sensei, what he said? Was a strong, clear voice. He said, my son, Takashi, you have found the greatest way to avenge your enemy by learning to forgive. But daddy, my daddy, then he repeated once again, my son, my son, you have found the greatest way to avenge your enemy by learning to forgive. Thus, his spirit disappeared. And since then, how many years now? Since 1985, his spirit never once appeared. You know what I think, Sara Sensei? My daddy is happy. My daddy was a truly found peace with himself as his number one son returned home. True place called peace by learning to forget. So uh, once again, I thank you for time to share with you. It is greatest way to avenge your enemies is by learning to forgive. That's what I am promoting. That's the reason I, I am desiring to return to Hiroshima for the 70th anniversary, 2015, to declare how human conflict can be resolved by learning to forget. I want to witness the grace of God. I want to share the spirit of the teaching of some life to serve. So I am searching, yes, just my asking. I am searching the sponsors corporate sponsor or any individual sponsors and 
Let's go back to Hiroshima next year to declare that victory is all oh, victory by learning to forgive. That's what we need in this current the world situation. That's the only salvation. Arigato, Sara Sensei. Arigato, Thank you very much.